All right, so welcome back. As uh, you can see here, um, as this is 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 happening, uh, one of the things that would get really awkward and uh, cumbersome would be if you just wrote all of your code like this, so that every time you incremented a day, uh, you know you're going to have to copy and paste this. So to go to the next day, you'd come down here and we duplicate that code and if we wanted to buy another store then we could buy another store so we can kind of using these code blocks we can kind of simulate uh, at least in a very crude fashion how the game would kind of work where you buy stores and you take money away and then each day remember we're gonna have more money now what's one of the variables that we would have here is um, store profit so each time it's a new day we want to make the profit of the number of stores so let's go ahead and say store profit um, is going to be a dollar fifty so that's a float as well and what this means is when you own one store you're gonna make a buck fifty when you own two stores you're gonna make three dollars when you own three stores you're gonna make four fifty and so on so on our day when we increment our day we want to calculate our profit How could we do that? Well, let's be clear. This is our daily profit. So we're going to calculate our daily profit. We're going to say daily profit. So we create a variable for it equals our store profit for each store. And we're going to multiply that by our store count. So every time we get a new store, you know, it takes money away. We increment our day. But then we're going to have more profit you know from the stores that we bought the more stores we buy and then so now if I come down here I could say um, money plus equals daily profit so just like that every time when we increment this day we're gonna increment the day then we're going to get our daily profit from taking the profit of an individual store. Remember, this is just for one store, multiplying it by our store count, adding that to our money. And um, then here's another, this is like another, buy another store here. So put a little space in there. So as I had mentioned when we first started this lecture out a little bit, this starts to get unwieldy. I wanted to get kind of the basics for, um, the the cycles in an idle game that you basically have a, a, a timer or something's going to increment in this case we're going to say the next day each day is going to be one and then when the day increments then we will get our money and when we buy stores it'll cost us money and uh, you know just another example here of incrementing our day and then in this next day we're going to have a daily profit that's going to come out and so you can get how it's all working so let's see now how we can maybe organize this code better now one of the things that we'd like to maybe be able to do is just give a status that would say you know how much money we have and how many stores we own and um, uh, what day it is those three pieces of information would just be in our game uh, really useful to have so let's go ahead and plan on in our game we want to show that and we would do that we'll just keep coming down here by just coming here and saying print day and I can say day number and I can actually come here and say plus and add to this day now I'm going to do this and create our first intentional error in uh, when I do this because you'll notice that we have a string here and then here we have an integer that's defined up here so when we run this notice how it says can't convert int object to string str implicitly so what this means is that it's not able to take a number and just add it onto this string. It, it uh, conflicts. It's a mismatched data type is what they've uh, referred to it in other languages. The, the data types don't match. And um, I wanted to show you this for one because now you're getting to see what happens when you have errors in your program. Um, all 
so far has been pretty simple and following along you might may or may not have had errors so far but when you have them this is what it's going to look like and the most important thing um, that you're going to want to look for is this line number right here so where it says line 38 you can click on that click on that and it'll bring you to where the error occurred now um, what you'll learn as you become a, a more uh, experienced developer is just because it gives you the line number here, line 38, that doesn't mean that that's always where the error could occur. Sometimes the error may have happened because of something you did uh, previously in a previous statement. But in this case, it's correct. We right now can't convert this integer object, so if you read it, it's exactly what's happened here, to a string implicitly, meaning it can't do it without help or automatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that right now by typing str because you can see right here it gives you kind of a hint of what you need to do. We need to convert our day to a string just like that. And notice I have to wrap it in parentheses and this is a, a function that we're calling um, and it's just basically taking whatever value we got in here, which it needs to be a float or an integer, you know, a numerical value that can be converted into a string. And so it'll print that out for us. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our money. Money equals, I'll we'll put a dollar sign there to make it look a little better, plus string money. Now let's run it. Now you'll see we don't get an error now, and we're on day three. So we got our day one as we started. We added a day here, and we added a day there. And then we already had seen how we calculated our money. We were, uh, you know, as you can follow it along and test it all out yourself. But it's basically addition and subtraction. So now pause the video and now try to write the line of code to print out our uh, store count so we know how many stores we own. Hopefully you pause the video. I'm going to show you how to do it. And hopefully you were able to figure that out. Um, even if the challenges sound easy and you go, oh, I can do it, I don't need to do the challenge, um, I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to try to jump ahead if you can and complete uh, segments to, to make the program work uh, the way you think it should because you can always come back uh, and, and do it again. So let's run uh, again and now you'll see that we have day number three store count to money so our our statements are working here now what we'd like to do is be able to show this like after every day so whenever there's a new day we're gonna show the information about our game in this case we're just showing three pieces of information we're showing our store count and our money and our day but as we build this up it's gonna get much more complex and we need a way to organize our code so in the next lecture we're gonna get introduced to uh, some of the basic uh, building blocks for building applications and that's how to create functions or methods so that we can organize our code and make it uh, easier to manage.